Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wind. Pastor my good evening, it's half past five. This is update for Wednesday, 20th of December, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes looking at the latest news on the island. Background to that news and sport, business, sea watch, travel updates and the newsmakers in person this evening. No boat tonight or the morning, a potential misery through to Christmas. Latest on the Bishop's political vote. The Park Road school site could be used for a new school. MHK criticises the gas disconnection law. And who is abandoning chickens? Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fast my Lewis Foster. Fast my. Tonight's Manxman sailing to Hesham and subsequent overnight return has been cancelled, as well as tomorrow's daytime crossings. The steam packet says they can't go ahead with the voyages due to severe gales. They make up a number of crossings from now until Christmas Eve, which are in doubt due to the forecast adverse weather conditions. Meanwhile, the union behind industrial action on the steam packet has labelled comments from the ferry operator that it's an easy target as disrespectful. A week today, members of Nautilus will carry out action short of strike, meaning they'll only work to their job title and won't do any overtime. And an MHK fears gas regulation is now in a worse place than it was before after new laws restricting the supplier's ability to cut off a customer were fast-tracked through the House of Keys and Legislative Council in a single day. The gas regulation amendment bill moved by Kate Law Brennan will now go to the UK Ministry of Justice to be assessed before royal assent is granted. In the international news, Brianna Jai's father says cruel and heartbreaking actions by two teens took his child's life near Warrington in February. The boy and girl, who were 15 but who can't be named for legal reasons, planned the attack, lured the transgender teen to a park and stabbed her multiple times. A man who claimed architecture was why he was interested in a London building has been convicted of spying on a TV channel to collect information for terrorist purposes. The 31-year-old conducted surveillance on the station that's critical of Iran's regime. And Lawrence Fox's comments about a female journalist on GB News was the most complained about TV event of the year. The regulator Ofcom says the remarks were raised 8,867 times. Those are the headlines. I'll be back with more at 6 o'clock. Secure tomorrow today with Man Benham's private client team. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Garamaya, thank you, Lewis, from the Ronalds Way Met Office. Uh, still with that warning for strong winds and gales later for the North Irish Sea. State of sea is moderate or rough. And for the Isle of Man this evening, cloudy and dry, a fresh to strong westerly wind overnight. Minimum is 9 degrees, 9 degrees. A forger Dane, dry and bright in a strong to gale force west northwesterly, decreasing late in the day. Top temperature is 11 degrees, down to 9 through the night on Thursday. And remember, the winter solstice is tomorrow night about 10 to 10. For Jahenia, cloudy, mostly dry and a strong westerly on Friday, up to 11 degrees. High water was some four minutes ago, so the tide has turned. Low tide tonight, five past midnight. High water, six minutes up to uh, six tomorrow morning. Uh, sunrise, 25 to nine. And the lunchtime low tide, 24 minutes past midday. Manx Glass and Glazing will be closed for Christmas and New Year from the 22nd of December. Reopening 8th of January. So, no boat tonight, no boat tomorrow morning. There's a warning. Every sailing between now and Christmas Eve is subject to disruption because of the weather. Steam Packet boss, the managing director, Brian Thompson, says he feels for people whose Christmas plans could be affected. I'm extremely sorry for those people. Unfortunately, the weather's just something that we can't control. I've seen all the speculation online that other vessels would have sailed, which, from the company's point of view, is absolute nonsense. Weather like this would have cancelled any vessel. So we're sorry to those people affected, but really 
there's, there's very little we can do. And there is a significant number of people due to travel at this time of year and that, I think that's a frustration. If it had happened one or two weeks either side of Christmas, it wouldn't have had such an impact. But we, we feel for those people because every member of our staff who's based on the island has, has felt this disruption personally in their family life as well. I suppose the question is around contingencies. Is there the possibility that if we see a calm spell, the boat can just go? Is there that ability to, to scramble in effect? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the, the, the good things about the liveaboard model that we're trying to move towards is to have that flexibility. So the vessel, if they're, if they're sitting alongside the crew are living and working on board, it's manned 24 hours. It can go at a moment's notice. So we are constantly looking for those windows in the weather. And when we can rearrange sailings, of course, it's not going to be convenient for everyone, but that's absolutely what we'll do. Well, are there chances that we could get freight-only sailings going in this time? So you've probably noticed that the Arrow's been sitting alongside all week and hopefully she'll pick up some backlog of freight at Hesham and we'll keep her in the loop as well for the next few days um, and any window where she can sail she'll do that as well so we're, we're hopeful to be able to bring some freight and we've t- spoke to the customers as well ensuring that we're communicating effectively with the freight customers and with the passengers I think that's all we can do as I said the weather's something we just don't control So the people who say the Ben would have sailed you, you don't recognise that? Another wrong. Talks on the future of the bishop's political vote have come to a halt after the proposals were adjourned following calls for a public consultation. A report's now going to be compiled and published as a result. The move of the bill, Ramsey MHK Laurie Hooper was asked how he thought the church might regard this development. That's a matter for the church. I think if what the chief minister expressed today is the case, that the bishop, well, we can't get a new bishop until we've finished going through this process with the bill, um, we could be looking at a very long public consultation. At the end of the day, though, it's possible possible the public will say no, he shouldn't have a vote. It's even more possible that the public will say actually he shouldn't have a seat at all and I think that's part of the challenge when you uh, go out and consult with people, you hear what they really think and the reality is the feedback I get from people is very much uh, as the Manx Radio poll shows uh, that the reality is people don't think the bishop should have a vote and there's quite a groundswell of people out there who also think that appointments to Tinwall shouldn't exist it, they should be elected members representing their constituents, that's the way a democracy functions. Uh, so ultimately Ultimately, the people that have really pushed for this public consultation may be surprised at the outcome, and I don't think they will accept the results of a consultation that doesn't back their already predetermined views. And that worries me to some extent, actually. You've got a big call for a public consultation. If it produces a result they don't like, what are they going to do? Are those members going to suddenly turn around and say, we completely support the public view on this? No, they won't. They will keep arguing and they'll find another excuse to throw things out and delay rather than make a decision and do the job they've been elected have to you do. you lost your enthusiasm in this cause? Uh, not at all. No, I mean, this is, I, I think I've spoken a number of times uh, around my frustrations with uh, Timwell's inability to actually make decisions on things and our, our propensity for prevarication and delay and kicking things into the long grass. That's what Timwell is very good at doing. Uh, and ultimately, there are so many issues that are important that need to be tackled. It's not an approach that can continue. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Faster Mites, 22 minutes now before 6 this Wednesday evening, live from Douglas in the Isle of Man. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture has retained the Park Road School site in Douglas as a viable option for the development of a two-form entry primary school in the town. Julie Edge told the House of Keys this week her department hasn't been able to find another site as suitable. The department has a requirement for a two-form entry primary school within central Douglas. As As such, Park Road School site remains a viable site for part of this development. Further meetings are scheduled for early 2024, at which point the department hopes to be in a position to share further details and confirmation of the next steps. I haven't been involved in any of these early discussions with regards to the site, but it has been a strategic commitment that the Department of Education does need to be able to have a site for a two-form entry school in Douglas. It's not been easy for the department to find another suitable site for the East. Um, However, obviously we're working with all our colleagues in um, Treasury and also the Department of Infrastructure to make sure that the right site and um, the right specification for for a two-form entry school within the East is um, brought forward at a future date. The Manx National Farmers Union says it's unacceptable for people to be abandoning chickens, especially cockerels, around the Isle of Man. General Secretary Sarah Comey says there are ways to deal with unwanted birds, but the problem is difficult to address because poultry doesn't need to be registered. Usually it's cockles. They usually get abandoned when people
people have been hatching eggs and some of them turn out to be cockles and they're not sure what to do with them. Sometimes they feel that if somewhere has got chickens, that maybe they won't mind having some more. They'll dump them. And it causes all sorts of problems for people who are keeping chickens. It causes problems for registered poultry keepers producing eggs on the island as well. Because obviously, especially with cockerels, they cause issues with the hens that you're keeping. There's a risk of disease. But also, I think probably quite importantly, there's a welfare issue, you know, and it's something that's quite easily preventable. And I think that a lot of the time, that's one of the issues that causes for welfare. But another one is the risk of spreading disease and finding food. You put them in a very challenging situation when they're dumped in the countryside because some of them can starve as well. From all sides, really, it's not an acceptable thing to do. If you want to keep chickens for eggs, you don't need to keep a rooster as well. So that's the first point. You don't need a rooster for your hens to lay eggs. They will lay eggs anyway. If you keep a rooster in with them and then you allow your hens to sit on eggs they will hatch out chicks it is entirely preventable and if you're not prepared to dispatch the cockles then don't breed them Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Now the motor vessel management departed Hesham at 19 minutes to three. She'll be into Douglas in the next half hour or so into the outskirts of the bay and onto the link span. 20 past six or so. Tonight's 7.15 to Hesham has been cancelled, consequently no return from Hesham. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 Manxman to Hesham has been cancelled because of severe gale conditions, consequently no one o'clock back from Hesham tomorrow. The next scheduled departure is 7.45 tomorrow evening, but that is subject to possible disruption or cancellation because of the forecast gale conditions. Announcement will be made tomorrow evening at 5.30. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. Progress has been made in helping the Isle of Man's homelessness issues, according to the chair of the Housing and Communities Board. David Ashford, MHK, says it's down to breaking through silo mentalities within government departments and third sector support. If, for instance, today you suddenly went home and found you'd been chucked out, um, there is the adult social care team in DHSC that can be contacted at any time. The number's out there. In fact, I tested it this morning. If you put homeless Isle of Man in, it's the very first search result that comes up, which is a telephone number you can gauge with and they will actually look to provide you emergency accommodation um, overnight accommodation to ensure that you're not stuck on the streets or you've got nowhere to go. What also will be being developed is what's termed um, basically a single entry point pathway because there are people who are homeless who have multiple other problems as well um, such as those engaged with addiction services and so on and it's about joining all that up to make sure that where people need information, where they need help and support they're not being sent off in multiple different directions they're at a time of crisis in their life as it is and the last thing you need to hear as we all know when we engage with services to be told oh you need to contact such and such then such and such then someone else it's about having that one point of contact there's different teams in different areas in different departments and what the housing communities board is doing and we did said this in an interview we did when i took on the role about how did i view it my role on the housing communities board is about bringing all those disparate areas of government together um, and ensuring that they work together to actually deliver things that they're not just going off and operating in their own areas Um, but also engaging with the third sector because we always talk about government there's also an awful lot of third sector organisations out there that do a very valuable job and provide services in a way that government can't Manx Radio Business Briefing At 16 minutes before 6, Mike Ashley's Fraser's Group said today it's bought the loss making luxury clothing site matches fashion from Apex Partners for about £52 million cash. Matches offers more than 450 established and next-generation designers and generates the majority of its revenue internationally, with the business delivering to 150 countries outside the UK. Fraser's uh, said the gross assets of the acquired companies are around £170 million at the end of January 2023. For a full daily market report, go to ramseycrookall.com. Sales of Novo Nordis diabetes and obesity medications, Ozempic and Wegovy 
Another similar could top $100 billion. That's £78 billion by 2030, and that only accounts for their current use, Goldman Sachs estimates. New research suggests that drugs could have many more applications, including in the treatment of heart and kidney disease, metabolic conditions, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. By showing that the drugs have anti-inflammatory effects, even in the absence of weight loss and in organs without GLP-1 receptors, the findings point to the drug's effects on the brain and underline their potential for treating a variety of other disorders, Bloomberg reports. While Wegovy can cost €400 Euros per month in Europe, its costs can climb as high as $1,350 per month in the United States. Denmark-based Novo Nordisk has been struggling to keep up with demand and to boost production recently bought a factory in Ireland. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets closed higher as investors digested fresh inflation data. The dollar strengthened against the pound. Oil rose on jitters over global trade and tensions in the Middle East and gold held steady. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall. At the close in London, Ramsey Crookall reporting the FTSE 100 up just over one percentage point at 7,715. The DAX in Frankfurt down seven hundredths of a percent at 16,773. A short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial is up five hundredths of a percent, 37,577. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index up two tenths of a percent at 15,034. The S&P 500 in Chicago up five hundred of a percent at 4,770. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling's trading at one US dollar, 26.5 cents, one euro, 15.5 cents, and 23 South African rand, 11 cents. In commodities, gold's down three tenths of a percent at $2,034 per troy ounce, and a barrel of Brent crude up nine tenths of a percent at $79.84. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house or the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. You should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. And MHK fears gas regulations now in a worse place than it was before the new laws restricting the supplier's ability to cut off a customer were fast tracked through the House of Keys and Legco in a single day. Douglas Central MHK Chris Thomas attempted to move an amendment to the bill, which ultimately failed. What if it turns out that the arrangements that the Isle of Man Energy have used were actually agreed with Office of Fair Trading? That will create an issue for Office of Fair Trading. What if it turns out that the Isle of Man Energy is serious about putting their voluntary agreement into a form, either with Cabinet Office as a voluntary agreement and um, or with uh, Cura as a regulation approach? What if it turns out that lots of things that were said there by ministers and other members, like di- threatening to disconnect 120 people over Christmas, which blatantly isn't true because they've said that that's not happening in, until the earliest uh, January, mid-January, what if that turns out to be untrue? And there are all sorts of statements. So essentially, I think we're in a worse place than we were before we put in this order making powers we've rushed something we could have made we could have put in place genuinely something similar to what what is in place in Ireland and the UK and we fluffed it update brought to you by Simcox advocates advising businesses and families since 1949 visit simcox.com or call 690 300 Manx Radio Sport. Faster my Rob Pritchard. Faster my good evening. A four strong Isle of Man badminton squad had a productive outing with numerous victories during competition in England last weekend. Toby Cheng, Annalise Meller, Matt Nicholson, and Kitty Thomas formed the Manx team to take part in the Bristol Senior Bronze on Saturday. In the mixed doubles, Meller and Nicholson took a three set win in their opening group match before a three set defeat in their second Group D contest to just miss out on the knockout phase. Elsewhere in the open singles, Cheng started with a straight sets win over Ben Chater before losing in two sets to number one 
seed Kishin Lee. There was a straight sets victory on the board for Mella in Group B of the women's singles against Serena Farrelly, followed by two losses in her remaining two games. Thomas began her Group A journey in the women's singles with two losses, but rounded it off with a straight sets win over Susan Tuck. Meanwhile, there was success for Young Island competitors Tommy Cheng and Lok Chung at the Lancashire Under-17 bronze in Lee on Sunday. The pairing claimed a silver medal after reaching the finals of the Under-17 Open doubles. In cycling, another young Manx talent in the sport could be set for a move into the senior ranks of a UCI Continental team. Ralph Holden has been listed as part of the Trinity Racing Team for the 2024 season, having competed as a trainee with them in the latter stages of 2023. Should that be confirmed, he'd follow closely in the footsteps of fellow Manx rider Max Walker, who's recently left Trinity to join Sam Peran. And finally in motorsport, the Southern 100 Club has raised more than £1,000 for charities assisting riders and families who may be in need of support. A recent auction saw the organisation selling off the podium celebration bottles to be used this year at the Balloon course. In total, £1,200 was generated, with the money being split equally between the ACU Benevolent Fund and the Irish Injured Riders Welfare Fund. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Everything's clear at Ronald's Way. Inbound next, it's the 7.30 Easy Jet from London, Gatwick on time. 5 to 8, Logan Air returning patient transfer plane from Liverpool on time. At the 8 o'clock, Logan Air from London City on time. Outbound, 6 o'clock, Logan Air to Liverpool. Then it's the 8 o'clock Easy Jet back to London, Gatwick. And on the roads in Glen May, the Arrowsea Roads close from Glen May to the Shoulder Road for resurfacing. Might be open tomorrow morning though. In Mackle, the Hibernia back roads closed for drainage work. The bottom end of Telephone Exchange Road in Lax is closed for test hole investigations. Face closures on the Ballock Hill Ferrig Road in Colby for water main work. And in Douglas, Hillside Avenue is closed through to Circular Road for adjacent office window replacement. And a section of Switzerland Roads closed for construction work till November next year. Till May next year, the Cairn Drockard Road in Andreas is closed in phases for water main work. And south of Kirk Michael, temporary closures on the Balalai Road for water main work till March next year. Off-road, and it should be finishing this Friday, the Heritage Trail from Glenlock Campsite at Glenvine to Union Mills is closed for ditching work and tree maintenance. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre with one year's free engine warranty from Castrol. Get more with Keyside. Faster my good evening. Thanks for tuning in to Manx Radio and Update Live. And if you're listening to the podcast, thank you for making Update the most downloaded news podcast on the Isle of Man. The Department of Infrastructure has received 76 requests for new salt bins since last winter, which is now being assessed. According to Minister Tim Crockle, who provided the House of Keys with an update on salt bins this week. The department owns and maintains approximately 1,200 salt bins around the highway network. 76 requests for new bins have been received to date since last winter and are now being assessed. This is part of the department's long-standing preparing for recovery work to increase community and individuals' resilience to weather the events, giving people resources and tools to help themselves and each other. With winter approaching, the department suggests that people take a box or a bag and go to the civic community site and obtain some salt so they can treat their paths, drives and pavements and roads in their areas when a cold snap arrives. Also, the department suggests that businesses prepare by having salt ready to treat their car parks, paths, roadways, helping keep their customers and employees safe. It's definitely not a postcode lottery. I'd imagine the bins are either, if you haven't had them already, then they're probably on order because there will have been quite a lot ordered, I would imagine. And as I said, mapping, um, I don't know whether it's been finished or not. I know there is a map with the, where they keep all the bins, so I presume they're all on there. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source. And Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. Steam packet workers will take industrial action short of strike a week today, which will see members of Nautilus, the union, only work their job title and they won't carry out any overtime. Well, the managing director of the Steam Packet, Brian Thompson's, described the announcement as hugely disappointing, but he believes the union thinks the ferry operator, our Steam Packet, is an easy target. Nautilus, the union's senior national organiser, is Gary Elliott. I find that quite disrespectful to his employees because we're a membership-led organisation that takes into account what our members um, feel and it isn't our members or the employees that have made the threat of fire and rehire three days before Christmas. This disruption could have been avoided quite easily 
had he maintained the consultation, negotiation and utilised arbitration as contained within the collective bargaining agreement. So what is Nautilus hoping to get out of the industrial action? Because the, the steam packet says it doesn't think the current action will have that much impact. So is this symbolic rather than expecting a rethink? Well, again, it's Nautilus as a professional organisation um, and a trade union that's been representing seafarers for 160 years and having a lot of members that operate on lifeline services, finding a way to try and get the company, the employer, back around the table for negotiations and consultation. We didn't close down that process. The employer closed down that process. We're quite happy to move to arbitration. The employer isn't. So they need to really rethink um, what their thoughts are on maintaining that consultation and negotiation. The ballot is indicative of previous consultation and what it's showing to the company is there is a loss of trust and confidence in the employer. You can't threaten your employees three days before Christmas with the threat of dismissal and a sacking that will take effect on the 1st of January. That's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Lewis Foster, producer Amy Griffiths. After the news at six, Howie Kane's here with Spotlight. Greatest hits with Chris Kindley at six. The Christmas Opera Hour with Ernie Thorns on at nine. And I'm back tomorrow at 5.30. W-I-N-T.